wait seems endless in a race that could be decided by fractions of a point. Elise has the score she needs and more, 15.30 points, widening her lead over Nancy. Well done, well done. Over on floor, Christina needs the performance of a lifetime. The 15-year-old has to pick up points here if she has any chance of staying in the race. Christina's score would be 14.65, so she picks up three and a half points. Nancy Damianova, meanwhile, and her coach has made a shrewd decision. Because gymnasts can only count points on two apparatus, they decided to compete exclusively on floor and vault. But an elbow injury has prevented her from upping her degree of difficulty. Catherine Dussault and Francine Bouffard are her coaches. Nancy is the kind of athlete who wants to show big, big tricks and she wants her routine to be full packed with, you know, big tricks. And because of the injury and also because of the time that we didn't have to really train new tricks, it was hard for her to accept not to show the biggest trick in the world, but be more precise and work into those little details to make the score. You have two ways of making the score, big tricks or quality. And we need to go into the quality zone. Here on floor, Nancy needs a score of 14.3 to earn Olympic points. And the judges give her 14.1, so not quite enough. Elise wins the all-around title and, more importantly, increases her lead to over 41 points. Nancy remains close to 37. Christina closes the gap between her and Nancy to about 10 points. But it's little consolation as she realizes the odds are against her to make the Olympic team. When we return to the Olympic Oval in Calgary, the numbers game continues as the women move to the final events. Now we've trained this routine uh, many times and got to go with that same routine. But we're very happy right now. You can cut the tension with a knife. Today's apparatus finals are the last chance for Canada's top female gymnasts to qualify for the Olympics. A complex point system will determine the two women will be named to the team. Toronto's Elise Hoffner Hibbs leads the three-woman race. Montreal's Nancy Damianova is second, about four points behind. And despite looking strong in the previous two competitions, Christine Vakuluk is a distant third, close to ten points behind Nancy. It's still mathematically possible for her to get the points needed, but unlikely. It could be possible in probably the best, best, best performance, I think, although I never count the numbers because I believe in performances, not in uh, counting points. Anyone who thinks there's less on the line for Elise and Nancy might want to think again. Not only are they fighting for a chance to go to their very first Olympic Games, but also for the opportunity to take their coaches along with them. Only the top place gymnasts will get that honor. Elise has been training with two-time Olympic coach Carol Angela Orchard for nine years. Nancy's coach is Catherine Dussault. This would be her first trip to an Olympic Games. Meanwhile, taking place on the other side of Calgary's Olympic Oval, the men's apparatus finals. Performances at this week's competitions will play a huge role in determining which six men will go. Jeff Thompson and Edward Yaroff will make the announcement in early July. Canada qualified a full men's team, and in the team event, five gymnasts will need to compete on the six apparatus. It really is a bit like a puzzle. Making this team is kind of like building a puzzle, but you don't know which piece to start with. It's really about dynamics and, and the way people fit together too. Uh, everybody is a different athlete, but there's some, some things that are people have worked on because of some of our weaknesses, like 
Brandon has started doing pommel horse, and that's because if he's on the team as well as Kyle, and they're both there together, one of them has to do pommel horse. So Brandon has started doing pommel horse. And the same with uh, Ken with his rings. He, he's not a strong rings guy, but he has to do rings if he's on the team with Brandon because Brandon doesn't do rings and so if he wants to be on that team and Brandon's there he's gonna have to do rings so it's a little bit of strategy that way and just making sure that you're doing the best thing for yourself and for the team to make sure we're not shorthanded when we when we get there. I think it's gonna be a tough choice to, to pick those top six guys. Uh, there's so many different ways you can put the team together and we're gonna have different strengths like just by adding one guy, taking off another guy, we, we might go down a bit on one event, but we'll go up on a, on a different event. So it'll pro probably be a very uh, tough choice for uh, national coach and uh, everybody else. One of Canada's best all-arounders, Nathan Gafuick, had an off day during the first competition. So this was the last chance for him to improve his stock. And he did, with several world-class routines. Another all-arounder, Adam Wong, showed his mental toughness on day one, and that same consistency shone through again today. And Casey Sandy, one of the wild cards here, showed why he's a contender. Watching from the sidelines again was Kyle Schufeld. A spot on the team has tentatively been reserved for Canada's best ever gymnast. As long as he can prove he's overcome his knee injuries, he'll be going. What he's seen this week makes him confident Canada can advance to the team final in Beijing. It was, it was awesome. Um, everybody looked good, everyone looked strong. I mean, there was a few problems here and there, but that's to be expected at this point. I mean, we're two months away from the games. We don't want to peak now. We want to peak in August, but I was really impressed with Adam. Just his consistency and coming back from his Achilles injury, that kind of, you know, that gave me a little fuel to my motivation, fire. Um, Dave looked great, Nathan looked great. He had some problems here and there, but, you know, he, he thinks too much sometimes. And we talked about that, and, and he knows. So right now he's just trying to, to just trust himself a little bit more when he goes out there. Um, Grant looked on fire. Uh, Ken looked great. Casey looked good. I mean, the whole team looks awesome. I'm, I'm really excited about the possibilities for Beijing. How hard is it going to be to, to make the, the final couple cuts? Well, it is hard, you know. This, um, I don't know. We'll see. You know, we will think about it. Uh, they did a very, very good, good uh, job. A little bit results, especially on Hawaii, a little worried because of you know, this event is not so hard, not so strong, and but the, the guys work it uh, perfect. While good performances here in Calgary will help the men secure a spot on the team, it's come down to the math for the women. Nancy Damianova trails first place Elise Hoffner hips by just a few points. An average vault score here of 13.6 will move the Montrealer a little more than two points behind. And she has it more than enough, and that gets high fives from coach Catherine Dussault. Two years ago, Elise did what no other Canadian woman has done before. She won a medal at the World Championships, and it came on this event beam. She didn't pick up any points earlier on uneven bars, so this will be the last chance to get some breathing room between herself and Nancy. The fall means she won't increase her Olympic total. You panicked. Instead of just stopping at one and slamming it back, you panicked and, I mean, it didn't have to fall.